All right, this week, of course, Ethereum is in the news doing all sorts of things with Shanghai. We've seen a big upgrade and, of course, a successful one, I think. We'll show you a few little tidbits of that uh, today uh, on the show as well. But I want to get into the topic of an operating system in Ethereum, and we'll talk about that deep dive. You guys are going to love this. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into TechPath. Joining me today is Marcus Haas, who comes to us from the Ethereum mobile OS platform. Marcus, welcome into the show. Thanks for having me. Hi, it's super nice to be here. Yeah. So Marcus, I want to learn first, before we even get going, is uh, when we learned about ETHOS, we've seen some of the moves that Solana is making with their mobile device. Tell me what ETHOS is and how you think this may change the dynamics around operating systems for Ethereum. Um, well, at this time, there are not many OSs for Ethereum itself. So we are pretty much the only one, as far as I know. Um, Solana Phone is pretty nice and I really respect what they're doing. Um, and to be honest, I think uh, crypto on mobile is so bad and it deserves as much competition as it gets and yeah. even more, to be honest. And I'm super happy about any new builders um, coming into the space, which I think is super awesome. Yeah. How will it work? It's a how, how's the framework set up within it? If I was a developer and I wanted to use EthOS, or I'm, maybe I'm maybe a current manufacturer and I want to create you know a side load or something like that with EthOS, how does it work? And what would its framework kind of propose to developers as kind of a business case for use? So the thing is, EFOS is open source and free. So anybody can come in and use it and even use it in an emulator if you want as a developer. You don't need to get a, your own device. And um, the way it differs is basically crypto on mobile is, uh, or I guess Google and Apple is treating Ethereum as just another application instead of the protocol that underpins Web3 itself. So that's the reason we think we need an own OS where people don't have to build around, but actually use uh, system OS uh, features that, for example, make it easy to use crypto apps, but also, for example, for developers to make it super simple to uh, create apps uh, for mobile, which is a really big hassle at this time. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, this has been one of the biggest challenges, I think, is getting a mobile device that's going to enable this. The likelihood is that we're going to start to see a lot of companies moving in this direction. You had Elon, of course, doing something with the eToro, being able to do trade inside Twitter. Likelihood we'll see more apps moving in that direction, possibly maybe even new platforms being developed to be able to handle um, crypto in general, especially in the mobile devices, because I think a lot of the growth area uh, is within these developing countries, which have essentially leapfrogged the PC and mobile is pretty much kingpin in a lot of countries right now. So being able to get to that level, I think is gonna be uh, critical. What would you say would be some of the key first, you know, development apps that might come out of the use of ethos? Where do you see it most likely being used? Um, I see it most likely being used um, as a secondary device at this moment. So um, a lot of features are still beta. And to be honest, we really love people trying EFOS and uh, telling us about any bugs that they uh, uh, basically you know, encounter because we can fix them. <laughs> um, and at this time, I think DeFi is super easy. Um, I envisioned a lot of swap apps coming into the mobile space, which makes okay. it super easy to yeah, swap from one asset to another. Um, for example, like a Uniswap mobile app that could be used on EFOS using um, the system level wallet instead of its own wallet. Yeah. All right. So I, I was looking at the, it's just some of the features here on you, you guys' website. Uh, decentralized messaging. So that would, that would be critical if it's a super secure system. I mean, if you think about Signal and others, out there that are kind of going this direction. Onboard light node. So now you're running, a, is this a full node on for Ethereum? How would that, explain that. It, sure, it's not a full node. The thing is the, a full node basically saves all blockchain uh, data as far as I know. Okay. Um, and a light node 
basically allows access to the blockchain on resource constrained devices. Okay. And the thing is, before the merge, um, light nodes were uh, super trustless. So you didn't need any counterparty uh, that you would have to uh, trust, I guess. After merge, merge that sadly got broken. And at this time, we have a light client proxy, which basically takes data from a third party RPC provider, but it verifies every piece of data that it gets. So okay. with the yeah, with the old light node, it was better because you didn't have to basically rely on a third party RPC, but um, the current implementation still verifies every piece of data. Do you think um, that'll get updated over over time with yes. new advancements? Okay, all right, good. Uh, let's talk about ENS integration because this to me is going to be a, a critical one. Uh, Ethereum name ser services, etc., and ID, digital ID, obviously working their way into apps is going to be pretty critical, especially if you could carry that ID from app to app to app, which is not necessarily the case, obviously, with traditional mobile devices now. Is that something that you feel is going to be a component that will be utilized, or how far into the development are you guys with that? Oh, yeah, 100%. We basically have a contact app now where you can obviously create contact and call people. And uh, for example, at, at the moment, we have a field where you have an ENS where you can input an ENS domain. And we just pushed a feature like last week where if you put in an ENS domain, it automatically looks on the blockchain for if you have an email associated with that one or any other um, uh, any other like socials associated with the ENS they'll get auto completed. So basically your decentralized identity gets thrown into the contact that you're trying to import. I was looking on your FAQs, the mobile devices, looks like it's uh, the pixels. Um, plans for developing or seeing development on iOS, is that kind of a no-fly zone right now because of Apple? At this time, it's a no-fly zone, and I don't think Apple is quite happy with people um, building, or I guess, flashing OSs other than iOS. They're like yeah. super not cool with that. <laughs> sensitive. <laughs> well, yeah, I, sensitive. You know, that's, that's part part of the world of trying to become, you know, the totalitarian uh, technology czar of the planet. You know, the gatekeeper, <laughs> uh, as they say, Gozer. Um, let's go into this right here, a wallet manager. All right, this is one of the biggest problems I feel like it, that exists in the mobile crypto web, and that is these crappy plugins that are in our browsers and these apps that don't work half the time within MetaMask, Phantom. I mean, you can go down the list. It's, they're all there. They're clunky, very clunky. Will this fix this, or will this be something that, hey, it's just going to be a Band-Aid for right now? What do you, what do you think? This is our idea of a fix for that issue. So basically, EFOS uh, has a wallet on the system layer, which is secured by the secure enclave. And this wallet manager that you're showing at this time, uh, at this, uh, you know, on your screen, is basically just an app to manage the system layer wallet. The cool thing is, any app can connect to the system layer wallet. So if anybody was like, "Hey, this wallet manager app from EFOS is super bad. I want to create my own." wallet manager app, they can totally do so. They can fork it, for example, add NFT support to it. That's not there yet. And um, it'll just work fine because any app can connect to the system wallet and make signature requests or uh, transaction requests, which is basically, um, you, it's, it's, it's a much better experience than the uh, current state of things. That I think is going to be the critical component in, in terms of adoption of being able to kind of scale what Ethereum is doing. And I think that's the the kind of the next big thing, uh, even to the point of a lot of the developers we were looking at it, you know, once they reach Shanghai and, and this next evolution of what Ethereum might, might do for technology wise, is they've really looked at scalability as being kind of the next leap forward. So having this at the point in time in which ETH has developed, this has to be a win for you guys. I was just looking at some of the charts here on ETH deposits and withdrawals, just to give you an example of how popular the Shanghai move was. That, that orange that you guys can see there, those were the withdrawals. And the deposits, of course, spiked on this. So 
a fairly, um, I think, a good showing for ETH in general and the faith in what uh, Ethereum means. So it's got to be a good sign for ETHOS and what you guys are developing in the future. When you look at developers and they come to you with ideas, is there one sector of developers that are saying, let's go this way with a wallet or let's go this way with NFT marketplace? Is there is there one that seems to be heating up over the other right now and potentially use case? Funnily enough, um, we don't really... Uh... Like, I have not asked yet exactly what they're building. It's just people coming in and asking questions. Hey, how can I do this? And I'll just okay. point them to the right resources or help them. Yeah. So I actually, I don't really have to answer for you. No worries. I understand. All right. So uh, let's talk about mobile because obviously the big news this week is this right here, Solana Mobile. Uh, there, This is like going on almost as we're filming this. Uh, the likelihood of the saga, uh, you know, in terms of just the innovation that they're doing and more mobile devices. My question to you is, do you think that some of the big manufacturers, whether it's Samsung or others, especially in the Android space, do you think they're going to follow suit here with what uh, Solana is trying to do? That's a good question. I think at some point they will have to add some kind of deep crypto support. Um, of course, I would greatly like to see it be this EFOS system level wallet where, mm -hmm. I mean, the code is open source. So any manufacturer, even Google themselves could be like, Hey, let's bring the uh, system level wallet protocol onto Android itself. So basically, um, any distribution can then run the EFOS apps. I think that would yeah. be like a huge win. Yeah. Well, I think the, the key here with what, um, you know, what Solana has done. And this has been something too that they've had and they announced in their roadmap. And the good thing is, is they've gone fairly quick, which to me, that's impressive in the sense that they're kind of going. And I think, what was their slogan they were saying? I think the guys were telling me the not stopping concept of uh, Solana, which I think is good. <laughs> they need to do that with their chain so it doesn't stop. That's a joke. <laughs> uh, not stopping. Okay, but I want to get to the point, and that is when you look at acceleration speed in technology advancements, especially in mobile, how will AI or will AI play a role in this in the future? What are your thoughts? Yes, I think so. Um, and AI can be really be used in a ton of factors, especially also security. So for example, signature requests can sometimes be just uh, random nonsense. And what if there was like an AI that could um, read that and basically see, okay, is this malicious or is it not? And oh, um, okay. yeah. At, so maybe, at the maybe moment, as a security agent in essence. Yeah, I mean, for if example, you look at the yeah. agents that are being built right now, pretty amazing. I was looking at a couple of developers just this last weekend and we were going through AI agents and how they were essentially creating other agents to help that agent actually do the, the task. And I thought, okay, this shit's getting real now uh, <laughs> in terms of use case. Uh, it's going to be pretty amazing uh, in terms of functionality. Let's talk about the landscape before I let you go. Uh, mobile devices, you look at um, watches now, whether it's Samsung, Apple, you even get into the luxury device systems like Tagway R, they are doing you know, smartwatches um, and other devices as well. Now you get into IoT, uh, Internet of Things. Do you see Ethos coming into all of those kinds of, of potential areas? Sure. Um, although I'll be more on the, I think, on the phone side of things and on maybe even watch OS. Yeah. Yes, IoT, I don't see a use case yet. Though maybe you can use EthoS as an IoT device and it will automatically run a node for you, for example. Exactly. Or, well, then you get into something like Helium, which is exactly what I'm getting at. Is They're utilizing that kind of from their own IoT, even though they're they're kind of fragmenting off now into the, um, you know, the space of actual mobile service, which is mostly 5G because of their partnerships. But anyway, listen... This has been interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm thinking that we've got you, Marcus, very early in your stage of development. Uh, when you look at the potential here, 
this could be big for what, where the industry, industry could go in terms of, especially with Ethereum, uh, likelihood is there'll be more competition out there you know, within this space. Uh, so it's going to be exciting to watch. So we're, we're going to keep an eye on what you guys are doing. So uh, thanks for stopping in today. We appreciate it. It's my pleasure. So thank you so much about uh, asking me about EFOS. <laughs> okay. Awesome. All right. So you guys are tuned in over on the podcast side of things. Make sure and jump over here to the YouTube channel. You get a chance to catch all of our content, including a lot of our analysis and breakdowns of what's happening with Ethereum and many other projects out there. If you guys are not aware, uh, Shanghai was a huge success, so we're going to be doing some more videos on that. I think the aspect of where Ethereum might be going in terms of the charts, make sure and stick around. Hit the like button before you leave. It is a great thing that will help others kind of discover what's happening in this technology space around blockchain. Of course, if you're not part of our Diamond Circle, make sure and jump in. And it's very easy to find me out there on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.